everyone, Bob here. Welcome to Arthritis Exercises for Seniors. I'm walking around my yard. I call this warming up before I start doing some exercises that will keep my body in the best shape possible so I don't have the arthritis that I already do have get any worse. And I'm ready to the go. The first exercise is called the owl. And we're gonna focus on our cervical spine, which is our neck and the top of our shoulder area. We have a large muscle on both sides called the trapezius. It also travels into the neck, covering your vagus nerve. And that's a very, very delicate and important part of our body. So let's take one hand and place it on top of our shoulder and then give it a squeeze, bringing blood into that area. And then when you're ready, slowly take your head and turn it into the squeeze. Go as far as you can comfortably go and hold it there. Keep squeezing with your hand on that trapezius muscle. And after about three to five seconds, slowly bring your head back to where you started and then take your head away from the squeeze. Look the other way. Go as far as you can, working the trapezius muscle in your shoulder and neck. And after three to five to 10 seconds, bring it back to center. And then when you're ready, and don't hurry this, look up, bring your chin up, tilt your head way back. I know, there's a bird watching us. Down comes the head to neutral, and then when you're ready to do the last move, bring your head down, chin to your chest. Keep squeezing. And then your head comes back to neutral. Good, now we'll do the other side. Okay, we reach across with our hand, place it on our shoulder, give it a squeeze. And when you're ready, slowly turn your head into the squeeze. And after three to five to 10 seconds, it should feel good too. Slowly bring your head back to neutral. And then when you're ready, take it away from the squeeze. You're squeezing to bring blood into that trapezius muscle so that your head can turn easily and your vagus nerve can work to keep your heart, your lungs, and your guts very healthy. And finish it off with chin to chest, head down. Sometimes I hold it for three seconds, sometimes I hold it for five, sometimes I hold it for 10. That's it. The next exercise is going to work our shoulders and our upper back. And I call it the pole or pole dancing. You can use any kind of a stick. It could be a garden pole, could be a broom handle, could be a rake like mine. And by the way, it's a plastic end, it's very light. But you get a hold of your rake or your pole and you hold it out as far as you can. And then you make a kayak movement with it as if you were in a kayak and you were paddling down the river. Now you might not hold your kayak paddle exactly like this, but for the pole dancing exercise that works our upper back and our shoulders, this is how we hold it. Okay, and then you might want to paddle, kayak paddle backwards. How many times? As many times as you have time for. Just take your time when you do it and focus on how does my upper back feel, my shoulder blades, my shoulders, how do they feel? Okay, and then we're going to push it way out in front and pull it way back in. So I call this the row boat. Row, row, row your boat. Still part of the pole dance. We did the kayak pole dance. Now we're doing the row, row, row your boat pole dance. So we're pulling it way in 
and extending your arms and reaching way out in front. And I sometimes do 10 reps or eight reps in there somewhere. Good, and then the third part of the pole dance is holding it vertical and bringing it alongside your body until it's flat and then scooting across the water. So now you're in a canoe. So we started off in a kayak, then we went to a rowboat and we finish off with our canoe. So it's vertical, horizontal, flat across the water, vertical, horizontal, flat. Good, now you're in a canoe. Now you know, if you've ever been in a canoe, that if you keep paddling on the same side, you'll go around in a circle. So it's vertical, horizontal, across the water. And this is the canoe, which is the last part of our pole dance. Upper back, shoulder exercise. Good work, rake room, garden pole, that's it. The next exercise is called the one-legged or the one leg. It's a balance hip exercise. I'm gonna be standing here on my front porch, holding on to my railing. If you're in the house and you're holding onto the counter or to a chair or to a wall, that's just fine. Just relax, stand up nice and straight always when you're doing your exercises with intention. Stand up nice and tall and the outside leg, if you're holding on to something on the left, the outside leg comes up as high as you can get it. Notice it's bent and the knee is as high as the hip. Well, if you can only get it to here, that's okay. But bring it up, hold it briefly and then stick it behind. Now my Knees are kind of together, or at least they're on the same plane at the front. The leg's bent and I'm pushing the foot back behind. And then I bring it up, hold it briefly, and push it back. Knees kind of right together or close together. Up and back. There's four and back. There's five and back. That's pretty good for the first time. Now, before we go to the other knee, this time we're going to lift it up again, same position. Take it out to the side, trying to look straight ahead with our hips. See how wide you can open them up. Back and down. Up when you're ready, as high as you can get it. Out to the side, briefly hold it there. Back to the front and down and then up out hold it back to the center and down and one more up out to the side and hold it back to the center and down and now one more before we go to the other side and do it we're going to start by going up push it behind come back up go out to the side Come back in and down. Let's try that again. Up, back, up, side, front, and down. Just one more. Up, back, up, side, front, and down. Yes, arthritis is all about joints. This is our hip joint. We don't want any arthritis to grow there, so we want to be very healthy in that position. Now I'm going to do it again, but I have to hold on with this hand, so you can look at me from the back, but it's the same exercise. So I'm going to start off with standing nice and tall, outside leg up, push it back, up and down. That's one. Good posture, remember. You want to hold it longer. It's up to you. One more up. Back. Up. And down. All right, when you're ready, best posture possible. It's going to the side, but first of all, up. Side. Back. And down. Up. 
side, back, and down, up, side, back, and down. One more, up, side, back, and down. And then to finish it off, put the two of them together. Just wait till the neighbors go by in their cars. Here we go, up, back, up, side, back, and down. So it's up, back, up, side, back to the front, and down. And just one more. Up, push the foot back, keep the leg bent. Up, push the knee way out to the side, back, and down. The next exercise is called sit to stand. It's all about your knees, all the muscles around the knees that keep the knees strong. But this joint needs to be healthy too because arthritis can attack your knees as well as your hips and as well as your shoulders and as well as your neck. So let's just sit up nice and tall. That's right, you know how that looks and you know what to do. No slouching. If I have to push my hips forward a little bit to bring my upper body up more erect, I will. But I'm sitting here nice and tall. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to stand up. And I'm going to try to keep my posture the best I can. But I'm sitting outside on the front steps. And my uh, bum is lower than my hips. My hips are lower than my knees. So to get up is going to be a little bit more challenging. So I'm going to use my best posture possible. I'm going to use my hands. I'm going to push them, or change my feet, and I'm going to push myself till I can get up. All right. Now I'm standing. Remember the exercise called sit and stand. And I'm going to stand with my feet, shoulder width apart, hip width apart, in my best posture possible. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to very carefully but try to maintain that best posture by doing a squat by lowering my hips instead of bending my head over until I'm sitting again. Whoa, sit to stand. That's only one sit to stand. We're gonna do two more. You could do five of these or 10 of these, but the point is do them with the best posture possible in mind the whole time. That means your back's pretty much like this. This is your head, your back. It's not like this. You're not bending over at the front, lowering your head below your hips. Nope, I'm getting up. Here I go. Here's the stand part. Check my posture. And then when I'm ready, where's my seat? There's the sit. That's two. When I'm ready, and I might sit here for a few seconds and breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth twice as long. Because remember, when you exhale longer than you inhale, you're freeing up the vagus nerve that comes from the base of your brain, through your neck, and to your heart, your lungs, and your digestive system. We need that vagus nerve. So anyway, here we go with the last sit to stand. I'm sitting, oh, best posture possible. No slouching. The head is part of that posture, remember that. And get up, don't lower your head. Check your posture again. When you think you're ready, maybe take a breath here first. That's right, exhale twice as long as you breathed in. All right, here I go back down. Using my hands, where's the seat? I'm not in a hurry and I don't flop into my seat. Sit to stand. The last exercise is a little routine, but basically it's all about the ankles. That joint down there can be affected by arthritis too. So it needs to be strong. Lots of ways to make that strong, but this is my favorite. It's a routine that encompasses all the body parts, all the joints. So I'm going to, first of all, either hold on to a wall or a countertop or a chair or in my case a railing because I'm outside. Stand up nice and tall. Perfect posture for me today. 
And when I'm ready, I'm going to come up on the balls of my feet, lifting my heels up as high as I can. Stay tall. Hold it for three to five to 10 seconds. And then I'm gonna lower my heels. Still holding on to my support, I'm going to lift my toes up and balance on the heels. So my feet are off the ground and I'm balancing on my heels. Still standing nice and tall. That's about 10 seconds. Good. And then with my feet still in my best posture possible, I'm going to hold on and lean back, push my hips forward and look up. And then straighten up again. Now I'm going to move back just a little bit. I want to have space between me and the wall or me and the countertop to place my torso in between my arms. So I'm an upside down L and I'm holding myself in a forward fold, but only halfway folding. So from my tailbone to the top of my head, it's pretty flat, I hope. And I hold it here for 10 seconds or whatever I'm comfortable holding it for. And then when I'm ready, I slowly straighten up, still holding on. Good, good. And then I'm gonna move in a little bit, but not much. Still in my best posture possible. Still holding on if I want to. I'm going to lower my body into a squat. And remember, when I squat, my torso is up and my head is up. I'm not bending. And then when I'm ready, after, say, 10 seconds, I straighten up. Let's just try that one more time to finish things off. Really, really try your best to think about your posture, to keep those joints from your neck down to your ankles strong. Make sure the vagus nerve is free to help you out here. And it likes perfect posture. So let's one more time. Maybe Twyla will come out of the house and join us. But here we go. Standing up nice and tall, holding on to something for support. And when you're ready, lift your heels up as high as you can. Breathe normally or comfortably or deeply, whatever way you want to do it. But try to exhale twice as long as you inhale. Good, and then lower your heels and adjust your hands, what, whatever position you want to put them in, but get those feet off the ground and you're balancing on your heels. Stand up nice and tall. Okay, when you're ready, push your hips forward and lean back. Nothing should ever pain you when you're exercising. Well, maybe your knees, if you've uh, maybe had a knee replacement and you're trying to bring the range of motion of your knees back to where they belong, it might be painful for a while. So I'm moving back. My legs are still shoulder width apart. My arms are shoulder width apart. And I'm making room for my torso, from my tailbone to my head in between my arms maybe i can put my feet back a little further yeah that feels better an upside down l you're breathing comfortably you're focused on what is happening to your body at this particular time and space you're not worrying about things like your taxes or what you're going to have for dinner nope Okay, and then when you're ready, you might want to come forward a little bit. And we'll finish off with a squat. That just means lower your bum down, keep your head up, and look straight ahead. If you can do this without holding on, okay, but I can't. And then slowly come back up. And you're done.